be in the house of God today. Guided by the visions of the ages, we follow God's path. Turning neither left or right, we keep God's way. Understanding the needs of our hearts and minds, we dwell in God's words. When we cry out, God help us without delay. Do not lose heart, for the Lord God forgives our iniquity and remember our sins no more. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. We come before God as equal in God's sight. None of us is perfect and without blemish. We are called to be joyful, joyful obedience in God's realm. Amen. Please be seated. Let us quiet our hearts and our spirit and be one with Jesus. Please help me with the opening prayer. Lord, your words are sweet to the taste, sweeter than honey. Let them be our daily meditation and our study. Give us ears to hear, for we marveled at your instructions. Train us in righteousness, grant us patience and persistence, and equip us for every good work. Inspire our faith and give us voices to proclaim your message. Guide our feet, keep us from every false way. For you alone speak the words of life. Open our hearts and minds. By your spirit, convince, rebuke, and encourage us as only you can. Teach, correct, and inspire us in the ways of your salvation. Amen. The opening hymn is, Oh How I Love Jesus, hymn 170. Please stand.
have children in the sanctuary, you can go downstairs for Sunday school. We do have Sunday school today. We'll have the scripture reading from Sister Christine, Psalms 121, and then Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Come on, I don't hear you. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? The sun is shining outside. God's spirit is among us. And we have an extra blessing this morning. Did you hear that voice? Yes. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We are truly blessed indeed. We now turn our attention to the written word. I'll read first from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not smite strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you. From all evil, he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. God. Now we hear the scripture according to Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. The word of God for the people of God. God. Amen. We'll have a musical selection from the choir. Thank you. 
Christine McCullough, my precious sister, she'll be bringing the message to us this morning. So please stand for Take Time to Be Holy, hymn 3695.
Brothers and sisters, just in case you are wondering how Sister Angeline and I are on the pulpit today, today is Lady Sunday in the United Methodist Church, and it is a time when the laity is recognized for the work that they do. The pastors cannot do it all alone, and laity is very important. So this is a Sunday where laity are given the opportunity to take charge of the worship and to participate in it. And I am I'm very blessed to have my sister here with me this morning. This morning, bless the Lord. This morning, the message is entitled, Continue to Run This Race. Press on. Press along. You've heard the scripture read this morning. And the scripture from Hebrews begins with the word, therefore. Therefore, since. The word therefore is being used here as a conjunctive adverb. Just to give you a little English lesson. And these words are words that are used to link two sentences or ideas. They show a connection between them. Now, some Bible scholars have contended that the first three verses of chapter 12 should actually be the end of chapter 11. So when you get a chance, go home and read it and you'll see what I mean. Therefore, we're going to take a look back to chapter 11. Chapter 11 is entitled, The Meaning of Faith, and starts thus. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the world was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. And then we have the listing of the faithful. Abel, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, David, Samuel, and others. Many of these saints suffered for their faith. They were mocked. They were scorned. They were imprisoned. And worse. But they remained steadfast. Let us be in prayer. Father God, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, dear God, for the opportunity to gather as saints together to worship, to praise you, dear God, because we know that if it were not for you on our side, where would we be? And now, dear God, please help me to bring forth this word as you intended. And let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So, hear now the words of Hebrews from the message. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished the race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight 
of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. You know, as you have heard our former pastor say over and over again, this faith walk is not easy. And Reverend, our current pastor has said it too. And sometimes some of us get upset. You know, somebody mash your corn a little bit. And you get mad. Oh, I'm not going back there. But Jesus endured much for us. And that is who we look to for encouragement in this faith journey. So I ask you a question. Who are the pioneers who blazed the way for you? Who are these veterans cheering you on? Some will say grandmother, mother, father, aunt, cousin, brother, sister, pastor, mentor. Let's get a little more personal. Tell me if you recognize any of these people. Ruby and Jethro Williams, Myrtle Whittle, Evadne Ware, Lloyd and Lucille Llewellyn, Lorna McFarlane, Loretta French, Brother Mackenzie, Cordelia Dillon, Clarabel Hale, Cora Dixon, Clarice Mahoney, Sydney and Dorothy McCalla, Carol Gordon, Loy Martin, Alan Best, and we sent one home yesterday, Eula Lee Simpson. There are many others, I am sure, that we can name in our hearts. But like the ancestors before them, these saints did not always have easy lives, nor did they live perfect lives. None of them were perfect. None of us are perfect. Yet they embodied lives lived in faithful service to Almighty God. They knew that a life of faith did not mean a life of ease. They understood the words of John 16 and 33b, in the world you will have tribulation. But he didn't leave it there. He had the words of assurance. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the midst of life, and whatever it brings, we have the assurance that Jesus is with us. But let's take it a step further. James 1, 2 to 3. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. 
in the face of trials, tribulations, doubts, fears, we are to endure. And as difficult as it is, we are to be thankful for our trials. The Bible tells us we are to give thanks in all circumstances, not just when things are good, but we are to give thanks in all circumstances, and we are to press along. We are to persevere. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines persevere as continue to do something even though it's difficult. In the world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. These are the words of Jesus. And he said them right before his betrayal, his arrest, and ultimate crucifixion. Before, not after. I want you to, to remember that. And so you will ask, how could he make such a statement at this time? I have overcome the world. But see, he knew, and God knows. He knew that everything that he had already endured in his human form would serve to bring us back into relationship with God. He came from God, and he was going back to God. His resurrection and the comforter, the coming Holy Spirit, would demonstrate that he had defeated the devil. He had destroyed the power of sin and death, and indeed, he had conquered the world. I submit to you today that Jesus himself is one of the greatest examples of perseverance, and he calls us to persevere in faith. Recent events have changed our lives forever. In the last three years, we faced a global pandemic, a financial crisis, and blatant outright incidents of racism and racial injustice. So you ask, how do we move forward? How do we press along? How do we persevere? Well, we turn to our Heavenly Father to look for direction. The scripture encourages us to press along with trust in God. I'm sure everyone in here and most of you, or all, not all of you who will watch, look at this online, know the story of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was 75 years old when God told him to leave his family and go to a land that I will show you. Now, most of us in here are immigrants, and not one of us left our home and went to a place where we did not know where we were going. Right, Sister Marva? Amen. And then God said further, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. How could they possibly do this? At this stage in their lives, they had no children. How is he going to make of them a great nation? But Abram trusted God and left all that was familiar to him, and he went. And God blessed him immeasurably, but no son. Ten years went by, still no son. 
Sometimes, you know, <laughs> we try to put God, take God's work and do it ourselves. This is what he did. They had waited too long. So Abram took, Sarah actually took matters into her own hands. And she had her husband sleep with her Egyptian slave, Hagar. We're not supposed to do God's work. We just mess things up when we do that. Can I get an amen? amen. So when Ishmael was born, Abraham was 86. Ish Ishmael was his heir, but he was not the child of the promise. And so it would be another 13 years before Isaac was born. Abraham was then 99 years old. I want that to sink in for a minute. It was 22 years before God's promise to Abraham was fulfilled. Some of us can't even wait a day. But God's promises are sure. And we just need to trust him. And we need to trust that he knows what he's doing and that he will do what he says he will do. Amen? Amen. And so, and so you may ask, how do we trust God in the midst of our current reality or in the midst of what is going on in our lives? Well, if you are sitting within the sound of my voice or at whatever point you look at this recording, it means that you are still in the land of the living. And though many may not have contracted that deadly disease and many have succumbed to it, you are still here. You are still here. And I want to assure you this morning, brothers and sisters, that where there is life, there is hope. Amen. When worry rears its ugly head, remember the words of 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast all your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. When depression starts setting in and you do not know what to do or which way to turn, remember the voice of the Savior saying in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will do what? I will give you rest. Oh, brothers and sisters, when you feel so low that you have to look up to see the bottom of the barrel, remember the words of Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, and I know you know it. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Brothers and sisters, we do not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. The scripture says in Romans 4, 3, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So what should our response be in the face of trials? We are to persevere in trust. I did not say it. Look at Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I know you know this as well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will do what? Make your path straight. Amen, amen, amen. 
Well, secondly, I want to encourage you to press along with strength from God. The word strength and its various derivatives appear in the Bible more than 360 times and refers to both natural and supernatural strength. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. And here is another familiar verse that I know you all know, Philippians 4 and 13. Oh, say it with me. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Brothers and sisters, we can do anything when we put our faith and trust in God's strength and lean on him. To that end, I want to share a true story with you. A young pastor was sent to an inner city church to serve as their new pastor. And when he and his family got there, he met some hardworking saints, some mothers and fathers that had kept the church alive through prayer, devotion, fellowship, love for one another, and commitment to God's work. They weren't a big church, but they loved the Lord and they knew his work was important. And many of the members of that congregation were older than this pastor and they looked at him as a son and they loved him as such. Well, when they had submitted their requirements for a new shepherd, the church had requested a young, vibrant leader. Those qualifications were met. And not only that, he was a visionary and led his congregation in the strength of God's grace. First, he discerned the will and the wishes of his flock. Then he determined the most ardent needs. He evaluated the current state of his new charge, and then he got to work. He instituted a time of praise and worship during the morning service. Working along with his leaders and congregants, they discussed and determined how best to reach the wider community, how to include the children and the young people in the congregation, and how to continue to make disciples. They expanded ministries with children and young adults and had a children's moment during the service and had a Sunday designated as Youth Sunday. Recognizing that he could not do everything by himself, he modeled the Charles Wesley class system and created visitation teams. He helped to expand prayer and witness ministries and encouraged members to serve as teachers and leaders alongside him in Bible study and new members classes. He established an organizational and stru uh, structure that is the envy of churches in this organization and organized ministries along cluster lines. He engaged in partnerships with organizations within the community and encouraged and supported members serving outside of the local church at the next level. And to God be the glory, there were three 
members of his flock that became pastors themselves. When the new pastor arrived, the congregation had expressed an interest in acquiring some potential property surrounding the church. So after evaluating their current financial status, he said to them, you can't buy anything with $3,000. That was how much that was saved. He then instituted an aggressive capital campaign fund and was in readiness to purchase what is now a multi-million dollar property that is adjacent to the church. Pressing along in God's strength. And then, quite abruptly, he was taken away and appointed to another charge. To many, it was unexpected. It was haphazardly done. It was painful, like ripping off a bandage without any warning. It was chaotic. It was painful. It was distressing. It was disappointing. But hear the words of this man of God as he prepared to leave his beloved flock of more than two decades. He said, do not become what you feel. Do not let bitterness get the best of you. Do not let your bitter feelings shape your speech. Talk to God. Trust in God. He also told them to remember who they are. According to 1 Peter 2 and 9, they are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Oh, and they were to remember who God is. He is an ever present help in the time of trouble. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. And we can do all things in the power and in the strength of his power. Oh, we just got to call on him. Because according to Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Oh, he encouraged his congregation that in order to continue to do the work that God had called them to do, they must depend on God. You cannot encourage anyone, he said, until you encourage yourself in the Lord. He sang those familiar words, be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Many of the saints he met when he went to that congregation, has since joined the great cloud of witnesses. But he encouraged those that remained to develop a warrior's heart, to continue to follow Jesus. Don't stop! And to do the necessary work and fish for people. As he reminded them, I say to you now, when life happens, 
Hear the words of Psalm 105 and verse 4. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Like that pastor told his flock, you can press on with strength from God. So brothers and sisters this morning, you know the concerns of your hearts. You know the things that are worrying you, upsetting you. You know your anxieties. You know. But you know what? Jesus also knows. He knows and he understands. He understands because he himself persevered. So I go back to the words that we started with. And I want you to think of those names that I called and those that you called in your spirit. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, oh, can't you feel them? Let us also lay aside every weight, every weight, and the sin that, sings, that clings so closely. And let us run. It didn't say walk. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to who? Looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of God. Oh, in this world you will have trouble. If you haven't had any yet, God bless you, but it's coming. But be of good cheer, because our Savior, Jesus the Christ, has overcome the world, and so can you. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is an overcomer, and so are you. To run this race of faith, we need to persevere. We need to press on. We need to press along. And we need to press along with trust in God and with strength from God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There is a little chorus that we're going to sing right now, and I know some of you know it. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to clap your hands, clap your hands. But we are going to sing this little chorus. It says, press along. Good morning. Press along, press along, say, press along in God's good way. Persecution with trials and crosses, crosses in our way. Oh, the hotter, the hotter, the battle, the sweeter, the victory. Oh, we're gonna press along, press along. Press along, 
This morning, Reverend Perrin says, get on board. Mm. And this afternoon, Sister Christine says, press on with faith and trust yeah. and strength. Yeah. And so I'm going to encourage you as we go out this week, we remember these words. And that perseverance is the key to all of this. And one thing you should also remember, once you got baptized, I learned this this morning from your Reverend Perrin, we're all ministers for God's work. Amen. And so no matter what you think, um, you're just a member or you just visit in, remember when you got baptized, you became a disciple to spread God's mission. Amen. And it is our job to do that on a daily basis, Amen. to win souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so thank you so much, Krista Sistine. You got confirmation and God is good. Amen. You know, immediate confirmation that your message was heard. Amen. And it's a word from God. Amen. And so we'll do um, the closing hymn, which is, actually it's not the closing hymn. We have one in before the closing. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the needs of prior. Amen. Hymn 352. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the needs of prior. Thank you so much for your generosity. We have three ways to give online. And then um, at the back of the sanctuary, you could leave your, your envelopes on your way out. Or you could always mail it in to the church. And the address and information is actually posted up online this morning. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, as we offer our gifts to you this day, we pray that in our giving, we may be reconnected to the reasons why we follow and the reasons why we give. You call us to be disciples who make disciples, all in knowing who we are, who you are, and why we are following. 
Help us to avoid that which distracts the desires to hear the things that pleases us and makes the road easier, but that will not bring us to the kingdom of justice, mercy, and compassion you desire for us. In Jesus we pray, our guiding light. Amen. And the closing hymn is, I stand amazed in your presence. Hymn 371. Please stand.
into the world, sharing yourself and proclaiming God's loving kindness, justice, and peace in words and deeds that bring life and hope. Remember that whatever comes your way, you can persevere because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Trust in God. Trust in God's strength. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you now and always. Amen. The sanctuary.